And I also think this story that the Salt Lake Tribune put out yesterday, which was exceptionally well done, um, I really thought that was well done. I don't remember the, the writer's name. I apologize. Um, but I thought it was exceptionally well done. And the big story in that story is there's no evidence this thing happened. There is no video evidence that there was racial abuse. And they have looked at all of the, do you have the writer's name? Uh, right? Yeah, there's two writers, actually, Courtney Tanner and Kevin Reynolds. Great job by Courtney Tanner and uh, Kevin Reynolds uh, at the Salt Lake Tribune. There is a ton of video evidence. There are coaches tapes. There are facility tapes. There is no video evidence showing anyone. There's not a video showing anyone dropping racial slurs or attacking this woman verbally with racial slurs while she was serving for Duke Volleyball. Furthermore, the story that comes out now is the kid that was banned from BYU was certainly not the one that was racially abusing this Duke volleyball player. Video, the police confirmed that video corroborates the kid's story that he was not racially abusing this woman. At no time when, when this Duke volleyball player, and I'm intentionally not saying her name, by the way, but at no time when this Duke volleyball player was back serving to the Rock, which is the BYU student section, at no time was this banned student who goes to um, UVU, at no time was that student seen on video, even in the area, let alone racially abusing this Duke volleyball player. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this story? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are jumping to the conclusion that she fabricated it or made it up. I've seen a lot of Twitter noise saying that you know, she smoletted it, you know, like, I think that's all tongue in cheek. I, I think the reality of the well, situation is. Well, but that's is, an important comparison. Yeah. S what that Smollett reference is, is to an actor in Chicago who claimed he was out walking the streets of Chicago and was, was beaten because he's black. And he called the police, filed a police report, went to trial and was found guilty of making those false accusations. That's why I think his first name is Ju Ju Juicy or Juicy Smollett. Jesse, Jesse. Yeah. Smollett. I don't remember the guy's first name. He, he was an actor on Empire, the show Empire. And he completely, according to the court system now, he completely made it up. Yeah. And so the, the point just is, is that th that comparison is being made. And I think that, it's just a difficult situation because I, I, I think it's an incredibly strong accusation and dangerous accusation to say that a a black athlete made up, um, you know, that they were called the N-word. That is an incredibly heavy, dangerous, impactful accusation to say that she made that up. That said... There is no video evidence of anybody doing it. So that's kind of where the water gets murky for me. I, I don't know. Like, this is what we talk about in the NFL all the time. This is what we talk about in any, like, in the Trevor Bauer situation or in the Deshaun Watson situation or whatever. Anytime someone's in trouble or anytime there's an issue, a situation, a happening, um, you need video evidence. If you have video evidence and it supports what you're saying, then obviously the case is closed. But if you're saying one thing, but no video evidence is, is present, like that's a problem. And so I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what, what to say or, or, or what to, you know, what kind of opinion to have other than, Hey, there's no video evidence. This yeah. is a problem. I mean, I, 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 I hesitate to be like, yeah, she just made it up and she, she didn't hear anything. And this is complete garbage. And that is a very, I just can't see very, going there. That's a very serious accusation. Yeah. And I think when you look at this 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 thing, um, and you begin to understand how serious this is, you look at what they wrote in the Salt Lake Tribune, and I think this is an incredibly important piece of this pie. This second paragraph here, when you read it, various BYU athletic employees have been reviewing video from BYU TV and other cameras in the facility that volleyball team has access to for film review. 
This has been an ongoing. Uh, this has been ongoing since right after the match on Friday night. BYU Associate Athletic Director John McBride said in a statement, quote, the person who was banned was the person identified by Duke as using racial slurs. However, we have been unable to find any evidence of that person using slurs. I, I don't know. Then how do you ban this kid? Yeah, so now, so now, and, and I'm not saying the Trib is making this accusation, but when you start to kind of put these puzzle pieces together, if you will. Yeah. It start like that statement right there brings up this concept of, okay, well, so is, is Duke covering for its athlete is like, like is not that I think they are, but like, it starts to beg that question, here's, you know, but like it's just crazy. Here's the problem. And I know you touched on this. These are really serious accusations. Yeah. A number one, serious accusation. BYU fans racially abused a black volleyball player from Duke. That's a really serious accusation. That made national news. I want you to understand this. This is very serious. There are a lot of people accusing this young woman of fabricating this story. That's a really serious accusation to be made against this woman. Because we know the volatility in this country right now surrounding racial issues. To say that this young black woman made up a story that fans from BYU were racially abusing her is a very serious accusation. That is a life-altering, potentially life-ending accusation for this woman at, B at, at Duke. For this kid who was banned to be labeled a racist... And he was the guy that was abusing this woman with racial slurs is a very serious accusation. To be using the terminology smoletted is a very serious accusation. We cannot just gloss over this. We cannot just let this fade away. This has to be figured out. Did this woman make that up? If she did, there needs to be serious repercussions for her. If there were fans in those stands racially abusing this woman, there needs to be serious repercussions for them. And Fast. by the way, I think one of the more important parts of this story that we have to talk about, BYU's honor code would require people in those seats to stand up and say, hey, this is wrong. It would require them to come forward and say, this is what I saw. This is the person who was doing X, Y, and Z. Not a single person in that section or any other section, or any other part of this story has come forward as a witness to say, I saw this, I heard that, here's what happened. Nobody. Let me pose this question, though, because I, I think a lot of people would have this question. What, like, in your opinion, how serious is is, is the honor code? Because I feel like for years, when we were well, when, when BYU football has been in conversation, the honor code has always been sort of this... I'm not going to say a laughing point, but like people have made fun of the honor code. They've said that it, you know, like it would be why you wouldn't go to BYU. So in situations like this, how serious is the honor code? I mean, is it something truly at BYU where people are like, yeah, the honor code says I have to do this, so I'm going to do it. That's what I'm really curious about in this situation. I don't mean to question, you know, the honor code's integrity or what it means or, or what it tells its students to do. But what I'm just simply saying is, from the student body, those people that were there that night, did they feel compelled to come forward by the honor code? Or is it a situation where the honor code lives, but the students don't really abide by it to that level? They're not impacted by it on that deep of a level. That's what I'm really curious about. Because to your point, no one's come forward. But is that because nothing Man. happened? Or is that because they're they're just not compelled enough? That's what I think is fascinating. Nobody has come forward. And they've reviewed, like, and I want to make sure people understand this. Um, campus police say it doesn't appear the man who was eventually banned for racially abusing this volleyball player. Video evidence does not back up that story. That's the, th man, that's it's the hard problem. part. It's a problem. They've looked at a ton of tape on this. And they cannot find this kid even in that area when when this volleyball player. And what they've done is they've tried to, you know, patch this together in a timeline. 
this woman was serving back there in volleyball serving and they have that tape and the kid that they accused that Duke pointed out and accused of racially abusing this woman is not even in the frame. Here's my other question. If it, if, if we suppose that this never happened, that there was no racial abuse, that nobody was saying anything, what, was the reason for the cops showing up on the Duke bench? Was it just that they asked them to? Like, did the cops not hear anything? That's the other thing I'm waiting for. Hey, you had police on the bench. So they they must have heard something then. Well, you know what I, I mean? I, this is why I ask what happened to the coaches? What happened to security? What happened to her teammates? What happened to anybody? The teammate portion's also, I think, A anybody. Super important. Where is any because you're not you and for those of you who, who don't know The Rock, which is the BYU student section, it's not mild-mannered people yeah. watching volleyball. On BYU radio. They're loud. They're walkers. They're aggressive. Yes. They're one of the best student sections in the country, The Rock. You would have heard this. You would have heard this. But again, I want to be careful here. Because accusing her of lying about this is a really serious thing. Yes. And, you know, the other part of this is she's taking some heat because she's a woman. And you have to remember that. She's black, so she's a protected minority class. She's a woman. She's a protected minority class. Mm -hmm. She's an athlete. She's a teenager. She's a dookie. Like, there's a lot of people for all of those reasons who will attack this person. Mm-hmm. But she said she was racially abused. There needs to be a full investigation of that, which I guarantee you is ongoing now. Well, and I think that's why we're here. You know, I think that yes. that, that this this review of, you know, the footage, and, and I'm not going to sit here and say it's, you know, hundreds of hours of footage. It's footage from a game night. You're probably four hours deep on footage, oh. and you have points in that timeline Easily. where you're looking to try to figure out Hey, well, you know, we've got this angle, we've got that angle, we've got this angle, and we're having trouble finding but, it. But this is, and that's the problem. You yeah. have you have cameras that are fixed on different positions on the court so that you can see technique, you can coach and critique. There it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours, in my opinion. And okay, well, we got to pare that down to those cameras that are just able to give us a shot of that area yeah. from above security footage, coaching tape. It takes forever, but they've, they've spent a ton of time on this and haven't found one piece of video evidence. And I think the time thing's important. Remember when this happened, this was Friday night, this past Friday night, these accusations came out. So you've had Saturday, I'm going to say they probably didn't do Sunday. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Hey, you didn't do anything on Sunday because it's BYU. Okay, great. So you've got Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, and now we're, you know, a couple hours into Wednesday. I'm going to guess that they have been tireless on this. They, I guarantee you they started watching tape Friday night. Yeah. Had to have. But take the accuser out of this. Take this young woman out of this. Mm -hmm. How do you feel if you're this student? That's been banned indefinitely from BYU athletics. Well, I think you're pissed. I think you're you're really upset. I think you're you're, you're you're upset. You've had a scarlet letter hung on you as a racist. Yeah, yeah. Right. You were there to watch it, and this guy says, by the way, he he was accused not only of racial slurs, but he was accused of attacking this woman and threatening her safety. Mm -hmm. He said he admitted he approached her. But he said he approached her because she thought he thought she was his friend who played at BYU. And it's worth noting their uniforms are very, they're identical in color. The police noted that on the report. Yes. Because the Salt Lake Tribune did a fabulous job of getting that police report. He thought it was his friend, he said. Yeah. So if we're taking the accuser at face value, take the accused at face value. He said, hey, I thought this was my friend. That's why I walked up to her. Yeah. And then you add the, the the part of this equation that he this kid who's banned is not on tape anywhere. We're missing the fact while she's is, serving, dude. The fact is we're missing like like definitive video evidence one way or another. Because I got news for you: just saying you can't find anything isn't good enough. We like you need to see. Okay, we found dude in the stands at the time when she is saying that she heard this. 
Yeah. And he's not saying anything or or he is saying something or, you know, whatever they end up finding. So to this point, you know, to come out and say, because that's the other thing you need to consider here for them to come out and say, hey, we haven't found anything. That's also a powerful statement because you're you're putting out the messaging that, hey, like you did make this accusation, but we haven't been able to back it up through the video evidence. So that's what I'm saying. There is a lot at play here, and this is going to continue to go on. And I don't think that yes. that that we can make judgment one way or the other. I'm certainly not going to sit here and say that dude is innocent from from racially abusing someone, but I'm no. also not going to say no. I'm also not going to say that it's fact that he did because once again we don't have it yet. So that's I just think it's a really a, it's a sensitive situation. B, it's 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 more volatile, frankly, because it's a religious institution, in my opinion. If this had happened at a at at Utah, let's say, just as an example, it wouldn't be as volatile because you don't have that religious piece talking right. about you know the faith and the honor code and and. But let's be you honest. You know what I mean? The like, state of Utah has a reputation as a racist state. The state, the it first, does. The, it has first a stigma. the first conversation that happened on my Twitter feed when I tweeted this the other day. Oh, well, it's named after Brigham Young. He was a racist and he had 56 wives. Well, that was a hundred something years ago. And what the hell does that have to do with what happened in Provo on Friday night? Yeah. Nothing. And the problem is this plays to that stigma. It fuels the stereotypes. So it's very believable that yeah. a young black woman would come to Provo and somebody would call her the N-word. Yeah, you can put a story together. The only problem with that, Guy Holiday, who is, you know, m racially mixed, he's Polynesian and he's black, and he was a wide receiver coach at BYU, said he never had that experience. Mm -hmm. And you hear Harris LeChance, the offensive lineman who came on the show this morning, thanks to our friends at Papa Murphy's, um, said that Tom Homo, the athletic director, Talk to the team about this. BYU's taking this very seriously. Clearly. As they should be. The police are involved. The campus police are involved. Tom Homo's involved. The entire athletic administration's involved. Mm -hmm. And you found nothing? Nothing. Not even a little bit. Is this woman a liar? I have no idea. Did she think she heard something that she didn't hear? I don't know. But this kid who was accused, the police said... We found no evidence to support the accusations against him. And I have a real problem thinking that this Duke volleyball player rolled up to to the arena and was like, Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna make this up and I'm gonna you know Yeah. I, I'm gonna fabricate a whole story to get on ESPN. I I have trouble with that. I mean, you know, with all due respect, I have trouble with that. So that's why I say I don't think you can pass judgment one way or the other. But I think for for from a, an institutional standpoint for BYU, the problem is it doesn't matter if it happened or it didn't happen. You're labeled as a racist institution now off of a one-off event that may or may not have happened. Yeah. That's the problem. And that's why you need definitive video evidence one way or the other. Yep. Uh, Brandon Bond says, BYU administration listened to concerns in real time, placed security in the area, and sent admin to the stands to try and identify someone and no one could confirm. Uh, uh, why did why did Duke not make a bigger deal about this in the moment? Another very relevant question. I, I I have a hard time believing, and again, this is my opinion. I have a hard time believing that nobody in that section would have said something. I have a hard time believing that people at BYU would tolerate a flaming racist or a group of racists attacking a guest in their building, as Tom Homo put it. Yeah. I have a problem believing that. Okay, maybe not everybody, but you're telling me one single person wouldn't have stood up and said, hey, this is not right. We got to do something about this. I would have stood up and said, hey, I, you know what I would have done? I'd have gone and found a security guard. Yeah. I would have gone and found somebody and said, hey, you need to know that this guy right here is doing that. Well, and this is this plays into the whole texting thing at NFL games or at sporting events, really. Yeah. Now, I mean, and maybe BYU does it. I don't know. Someone can, can confirm or deny, but... But being able to text security the seat number and everything mm -hmm. to come and get dude, mm -mm -mm. you can't tell me something like that wouldn't have happened. Whether it is what you said, hey, I'll go get somebody, or you text or whatever. I, that's why I say like it's there's just we're missing information here. You don't bring police to your bench, no, and 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 not have had heard something. But conversely, how is it that there's nothing on tape? 
Yeah. That's my problem. Yeah. How is that possible? Yep. This hour of the show is brought to you by our good friend Devry Davis at the Davis Lending Team with Academy Mortgage, 801 543 9666. 801 543 9666. NMLS number 278545. And, you know, we talk a lot about mortgage, real estate. Uh, we talk a lot about the trends. And right now, the trend is house prices are going down. If you're a savvy negotiator and you're a cash buyer, you can win these deals. And by the way, how do you become a cash buyer? Well, you don't have $500,000 in cash, do you? Well, Devery Davis at the Davis Lending Team can absolutely positively make you a cash buyer. Devery Davis with the Davis Lending Team powered by Academy Mortgage. All right, first time home buyers, listen up. This one's for you. There's a huge misconception on how much it takes to buy a house. Is it 20%? Is it 10%? Is it 15%? The answer will surprise you. There's four mortgages in the United States. Two of them require no down payment. Two require very minimal down payment. Out of that down payment, um, there's lots of places to get it from. There's state funds, county funds, city funds, lots of ways to buy a house, no money down. When I was 18, I got out of high school. I actually bought a brand new house, no money down, no Never regretted it. If you have questions, give me a shout. Glad to walk you through it. Have a great one. Devery Davis at the uh, Davis Lending Team Academy Mortgage. He's an easy guy to talk to. Was chatting with him yesterday about this. Like, it's good that people are calling Devery and asking him questions. Doing doing deals with Devery Davis is one of the best things that you will ever do. It's one of the best financial decisions you can ever make. So call him today, 801-543-9666 for Devery Davis. Yes. You can buy a house without putting any money down. Devery Davis can help you do that. If you've been thinking about it, call him today, 801-543-9666. And again, I know a lot of people have been asking us about um, you know, all the sponsors on our show. And guys, that's the way the business works. We need you to support our sponsors. Guys like Devery Davis who are small local businesses, because that's what Devery is. Yes, sure, he flies under the uh, Academy Mortgage banner, but Devery Davis is, is an individual business owner. Those are the guys you want to do business with. And whether it's Devery, whether it's, you know, Alma at Wayman Brothers Construction, the local Papa Murphy's Pizza's owners, like yep. those are the guys you want to support because those are the ones pumping money back into the into your local community. Barbecue Pit Stop. Barbecue Pit Stop's a great example of that. Support your local businesses by calling Devery Davis at Academy Mortgage, 801 543 9666. Devery Davis and Academy Mortgage are equal housing lenders. Football, 50 in five minutes um, as we'll get you breaking news out of the Big 12. But I want to get some of your, your thoughts in here because I see a lot of people commenting on the Duke situation. Uh, Mark Rasmussen says, people follow Brigham Young, dude. He was a white supremacist 200 years ago. Brigham Young, I believe, died in 1877. There's nobody, and this goes back to the thoughts about polygamy in our state. This goes back to, you know, the, the thoughts about, you know, racism in Utah. Like, I, there's nobody that's like, well, Brigham Young had 56 wives. Let me go buy some wedding rings. <sighs> Time to add to the, to the stable. There's nobody doing that, right? Yeah. There's nobody that says, well, Brigham Young owns slaves. So, <sighs> you know, man, let me, let me go out and there's nobody doing that, you know? And are, are, is the theology, is the are the teachings still implemented today? Not on a wide level, they're not. And this is why you have apostles and quorums at BYU. Now, I'm not LDS. I am not, I am not a member. I am not a BYU fan. But I'm telling you, you cannot condemn an institution based on what Brigham Young did 200 years ago. And by the way, and again, I don't mean I don't mean this ago. in a disrespectful way, but I think it's really important to say. You can't be condemning institutions, whether it's BYU or otherwise, based on your perception and opinion of, you know, people following Brigham Young. Like, like we all have our perception of things. We all have our opinion on things. But, but when we're talking about an institution who's been accused of a racial slur incident, I don't think it's doing it justice no. by just saying, well, people follow Brigham Young, dude. Well, dude, it's BYU. Dude, you need video evidence. Dude, you can't be making serious accusations of racial slurs to a black woman um, without video evidence. And the problem is, is there not only is there no video evidence, they have the video and nothing shows up yet. 
Well, so, and I think the bigger issue is that not only was did this woman make accusations that she was racially abused, she also made accusation accusations of violence, saying that her life was threatened, that she was told to watch her back walking to the bus. Like they, violence and racial threats and which is also in question. These are serious accusations, man. Yeah. And they play into right now in our country with such a divide over race and and you know, theories and politics. And we've gotten away from the idea that we're all equal people, that we're not black or white or Latino or Asian, that we're Americans. We've gotten away from that. And the problem is if you cannot prove that this happened, it doesn't mean she's lying, right? Like T money says, since we, it wasn't caught on camera, she's lying. The issue is she's making very serious accusations and the way she described them, they almost certainly would have been caught on tape. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, well, and I think that the thing is, it, it, again, let's not do that. Like, let's not let's not try to twist words or or, yeah. or 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 try to make these you know like ridiculous comparisons to a guy who died in eighteen seventy seven. I can understand this logic of hey, it's Brigham Young. Like, maybe some there's some cultural stuff there with some sect of the state of Utah. Okay, I can kind of get with you on that, but let's not sit here and say because we're talking about the fact that they have hours of footage and they haven't been able to find anything that we're saying she's lying. What I'm saying is whether she's lying or not, it doesn't really matter. What matters is, is it on tape or is it not on tape? And if it's not on tape, it leaves the whole situation in a very um, murky place. But you've wrecked a guy's life. In another fair point, you've hung a scarlet letter on a guy and called him a racist and said that he attacked you and threatened your life or threatened your safety. Let's let's even just say he said, watch your back on the way back to the bus. He threatened your safety mm -hmm. after racially abusing you. Mm -hmm. That guy's life will never be the same because now we know who he is. Now we know where he goes, what school he attends and what his name is. And now he's a racist. And what's everyone going to ask him about when he goes to class? Hey, what's did you really do it? I'm telling you, these are st in, in times like these, it's 2022. We have never been more divided as a country. These are serious allegations that deserve serious investigation. Facts. This kid who got accused deserves better than this because if the cops truly clear him and they say based on evidence that they have, to, talking to people, interviewing fans, interviewing admin, interviewing... XYZ, looking at tape. He's not even in that student section when she was being racially abused, allegedly. And now I think you have to say allegedly. You do. Racially abused. Yeah, you do. He's not even in the tape. He's not even on the tape. They looked at all the students. He's not there. He allegedly said what he said. He's not there. So and now I want to be really clear. We're not saying that the guy's innocent or didn't do it, right? But what we're saying is we're having an honest discussion and we're saying, hey, this is what the evidence to this point right here today at whatever time it is, 851 on Wednesday morning says. I'm not saying she's lying. I'm also not, not saying that dude didn't racially abuse her. There's a chance that he did. Absolutely. But again, I just think we get into a really difficult situation like with with like. I'll keep going back to the Trevor Bauer thing. There was no video evidence that Trevor Bauer ever beat the living hell out of that woman. And the problem is, is there was text message conversation that didn't look good for her. In this situation, what do you have? What substance do you have to go left or to go right? You don't, we as, as media, the public, BYU, you don't have anything to stand on. And the other thing that I think is really important to say here before we get to football at 50 we have to talk about this stuff. Yeah. I. It doesn't matter. I, I'm a guy that I just don't believe your race defines you. I don't believe that because you're black or white or Asian, Latino, whatever you want to identify as. That's, that's, that's your right. Your actions and your words define you.